Hi, in this video, we're covering the phases of matter. So let's start with what is a phase. Sometimes this is called a state and they're interchangeable. Uh, a phase of matter is a form of matter that's based upon its shape and its volume. And there are four common phases of matter. Solid, liquid, gas are the three most common. And then plasma is one that's, that's kind of very closely related to a gas. I just wanna show you the, the first three there, solids, liquids, and gases. This is kind of a good depiction of what the particles are doing. Uh, if we could zoom way in, this is what we would see in a solid. You see, these particles are not perfectly frozen in place, so to speak. We say that when something freezes, it's turned into a solid, and that's true, but the particles themselves are not motionless. Uh, they vibrate in a fixed place, um, and so that's what's going on at, at a solid. You know, if that was to stop, if all of that motion was to stop, we'd be at absolute zero for a temperature, which would be zero kelvins, negative 273 Celsius, uh, but that's what's going on as a solid. Uh, solids have a definite shape, meaning they keep their shape, um, and they also have a definite volume, meaning this is something that's gonna stay, uh, really essentially whatever it is, it's gonna kinda stay in that shape and in that size. A liquid's a little different. A liquid will still have a definite volume, but this is, this is what changes. These particles start to flow around each other a little bit more. And they start to take the shape of whatever container they're in. You know, if you were to take a beaker of water, actually I've got a, a cup of water here, if I was to take this and pour this into a small graduated cylinder, it wouldn't be keeping this same shape here. It'd be taking the shape of the new container it's in. What it would keep though is its volume. So it's not gonna have a definite shape. We'd call that an indefinite shape, um, but it still does have a definite volume. Notice that the particles in a liquid flow around each other a little bit more. It's not until we get to gases that we have an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. Uh, you can stretch a container containing a gas to, to you know, increase the volume of that gas. That's what an indefinite volume means. And of course, it'll take the shape of the container it's in. If you were to blow up a balloon, it's going from your lungs to that balloon. So it's gonna completely fill uh, whatever the, the volume of that balloon is. Once you tie off that balloon, you can stretch it, and that's changing the volume of that substance. Um, and so that's, that's a good example of, of where you have an indefinite volume there. Gases, I've got a whole unit of videos on gases. We just spent an entire unit on it. So there's lots going on there. This is related to the kinetic molecular theory for sure. Now, plasmas. What's a plasma? A plasma is very similar to a gas. Uh, gas is moving so fast that electrons are spun off, creating ions. That's what a plasma is. Uh, lightning is a good example of a plasma. This is a picture of my beloved Geneseo, and thank you that Geneseo has allowed me to use this picture in this video. Um, but this is, uh, a for a split second, is a little bit of a plasma here. Um, and so it's, this is air, right? being uh, energized momentarily, and that's causing electrons to fall off uh, temporarily, uh, which is resulting in this kind of strike of lightning here. Kind of a cool picture. Now, what happens when we go between these phases of matter? If we go from a solid to a liquid, when we're adding heat to a substance, we would call that melting. In chemistry, sometimes that's referred to as fusion. From liquid to gas, we would call that boiling, or in chemistry, that's sometimes called vaporization. From, uh, actually, this is, this is something you may not be familiar with, but you can go directly from a solid to a gas, and that's something called sublimation. Uh, a good example of this is dry ice. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, and when you add some warm water to it, uh, or just heat it, even with just the, the room temperature air, uh, it immediately turns from solid carbon dioxide to carbon dioxide vapor, which is the gas phase of carbon dioxide. To take a gas and to turn it into a plasma, we call that ionization, because we're turning that gas into ions. That's where the name ionization comes from. All right, great, so this is from left to right as we're heating something up. What happens if we cool it down? Let's go in this direction now. Plasma, as it cools down to become a gas, is called deionization. That's what that process is called. Super creative, I know. It's the opposite of ionization, just deionization. To go from gas to liquid, that would be called condensation. If something's condensing, it's turning from a gas to a liquid. And then you've also got freezing from liquid to a solid. 
And there's one more. A substance could go from the gas phase to the solid phase directly. This one's called deposition. Um, so last thing to put on this is actually kind of two things here. As you go from the left to the right in this diagram here, as the temperature increases, the kinetic energy increases. Because temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of the particles. So from left to right, kinetic energy is going up. There's something else that's happening. Entropy is going up. And for those who don't know, entropy is a measure of the dispersal of matter and energy. And so if you think about the uh, particle diagrams on the, the last you know, couple minutes ago, we were looking at some particle diagrams of solids, liquids, and gases. Those particles got more and more spread out. So as you go from left to right in this, entropy increases as well. So that's it. Those are the phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. This will set the stage for what we are about to do in the heat unit um, with calorimetry, but also with enthalpy. Thank you.